Welcome to our 13th season of We Are The Champions. Would you believe it? 13 years. Now, it's said to be unlucky for some, but not for us. The sun is shining, and we're here at Clements Hall in Rochford, which is a marvellous leisure centre, just up the road from Southend on Sea. And we've got teams that have travelled in from uh, Suffolk and from Kent, as well as the Essex team. And let me remind you, at the beginning of the season, these are not especially chosen as good swimmers or good runners. Anyone can take part in We Are The Champions. And what's more, they never told the rules of the games before we start. We surprise them just before the off. And that brings out the fun of We Are The Champions. Let's start by introducing you to the team that have travelled over from Suffolk. They are Gillian Burnell, Vashti Green, Diane Pooley, David Fry, Michael Strong and Paul Cullum. Now they're wearing red t-shirts with a black diagonal stripe and they are the team from Cobbleston High School in Ipswich. And now the team from Kent, Daniela Wellard, Charlotte Saunders, Louise Aldridge, Matthew Smith, Shelley Cope, and David Chisholm. Now they're wearing plain yellow t-shirts, and they're the team from Hexable School near Swanley. And what about our host team? Here they are, Emma Nichols, Fleur Harrington, Nicola Jones, Jason Bennett, Ian Smith, and Barry Cruz. They're wearing light blue t-shirts with a royal blue stripe, and they're the team from Swain School in Rayleigh. Yeah! Now, if we need a tough man to get the series underway, our sports celebrity fits the bill. Without a doubt, he's a four-shredded wheat man for breakfast. He's Britain's finest hammer thrower, the Commonwealth record holder, Martin Gervin. Yeah! Good to see you. How does I love, I love having guests that make me look small, Martin. That's, that's always a good thing. There's not many men, are there? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is your patch, isn't it? You oh, are yes. a local lad. I'm a, I'm a local lad. I used to work in this sports centre. It's a lovely place. Uh, I used to live just a few miles up the road there. It's lovely. Throw no hammer in this field at all? Let no, the, uh, my, I wasn't allowed to do that. I didn't like the grass being <laughs> damaged. OK, but you're uh, on the ball. I'm ready on the to ball, get us ready, underway. ready to go. We start our first race up there, Martin. We'd be glad if you'd get ready with your starter's whistle or pistol. And don't forget, you're the referee I'm as well. Referee. OK, See you cheers. cheers. OK, Martin Gervin all ready to get us going. And really, the first game should have been the last game because it's called Tired Out. Well, the yellow's on the left there. That's Hextable School near Swanley. The blue's in the centre. That's Swain School, Rayleigh. And the red's Copleston High School from Ipswich. Gillian Burnell, Emma Nichols, and Daniela Wellard ready to get us underway. Tired Out. OK, girls, we're ready for the number one game, Tired Out. Are you ready? Away they go, all together. Now they've got to get over the inflatable, and Danielle Wellard is first over. Emma Nichols chasing her. Gillian Burnell in third at the moment. Nice clamber through. Daniela going well. Up the flag, and the next one goes, and the next one, Charlotte Saunders. So the yellow's doing well for Hextable. And their supporters go mad, but it's very close. Fleur Harrington. In the blue of Swain School is up with her. There's nothing in it at the moment. But, oh, there's a good launch. Throw the uh, oh the yellow Louise Aldridge did a marvellous throw then. And there's a forward roll. She gets herself sorted, being chased by Nicola Jones. Still yellow and blue. Matthew Smith now, the first of the boys for Hextable. Matthew going. And uh, Diane Pooley's got a uh, little ground to make up. But there's uh, Matthew, and he's being followed by Jason Bennett for the Blues of Swain School. Still very close. Shelley Cope and Ian Smith. Ian Smith and Shelley Cope. And uh, David Fry's done well for the Reds. And the last of the Blues is on his way, David Chisholm. David Chisholm is, the, is on his way. The Reds have still got uh, another competitor to come. It looks like Blues first. No, it's, it's Barry Cruz home for the Blues, David Chisholm home for the Yellows, and Paul Cullum still to come down the course, and I'm sure his supporters will cheer him all the way. OK, so to our first look at the scoreboard, just to confirm Martin's decision, Ipswich have 50 points, Hextable have 75, but taking an early lead with 100 points, it is Rayleigh! Yeah! 
always looking for new games for We Are The Champions. We especially like those that are a lot of fun, and we get suggestions sent in. But this one, we went to the Royal Naval School at Tor Point in Cornwall, where they have some smashing games. It involves flipper feet, but no water, and we're calling it Flipper Netball. Are you ready? <laughs> now, under this net, where they find a pair of flippers. That Charlotte Saunders, Fleur Harrington and Vashti Green. And when they get to the far end, they've got to flip a flipper football over the net and see whether Daniela Wellard, Emma Nichols or Gillian Burnell can catch them. They get ten bonus points. Oh, yellows. Yellows have got ten bonus points. There's a hundred points for winning, 75 a second. Third gets 50, but of course there's a chance of getting 50 bonus points and that can matter. There's Nicola Jones and Louise Aldridge looking for their flippers. And coming up to is Diane Poole for the Reds. So the yellows looking good. Hextable leading. And the first of their lads away, Matthew Smith. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, just missed. That's a pity. Diane Pooley just missed. Gillian Burnell nearly caught that for the Reds of Copleston. Now, Matthew dra dragging on those flippers. So is Jason Bennett behind him. And on the way is David Fry. Look at them running through this. A little flip over the net. The Blues? No, just missed. Oh, the boy is not very good at soccer. Oh, and the Blues have taken the lead. Ian Smith up next. Just Ian and Barry Cruz to come. And I can only see one bonus point at the moment. That's the yellows. Ah, what about uh, Michael Strong? Yes, yes, the Reds have got one. Well done, well done, Copleston. And the Blues. So they've leveled it out. That was a nice one by Ian Smith. And this is Michael Strong following David Fry. David Fry scored 10 points. Michael Strong for the Reds, and the last man to go for Blues, Barry Cruz. Barry Cruz, and then it'll be David Chisholm, following Shelley Cope. There he is, David on his way. And Michael Strong on his way for the Reds. Oh, he's lost a flipper. He's got to go back. And the, the Blues, Barry Cruz. Barry Cruz, the last of the Blues. See if he can flip this over. Little drop kick. Oh, he nearly got it. No, but the Blues are back, or at least they will be, if he can get that off. Is it Blues? Is it Blues? Yes, I think they're there. And Yellows have got ten more bonus points from David Chisholm, and Daniela Willard did well. The Yellows have got to run back. They'll be second. Blue, yellow, red, it looked to me, but Martin Gervin must decide. So let's find out about those bonus points. Martin. Well, at this end of the race run, we've got uh, an extra point, an extra 10 points, in fact, for the Ipswich team, so that's 10 points extra. For the Swain team from Rayleigh, we have another 10 points extra. And here we've got two balls in a basket, so that's another 20 points for Hextable School. Great. So that means the scoreboard now reads, Ipswich have 110 points. Hextable have 170 points, but Rayleigh still hold the lead. It's Rayleigh with 210 points. Well, those of you that remember our last series of We Are The Champions, we had a great game called Fording the River, where there was a river with sharks and piranha that uh, nipped off their feet if they got caught in that space with their wheelbarrow and all their equipment. We now have a similar game, which is against the clock. They've got three minutes. They have a chasm to cross. They've got a wheelbarrow, they've got buckets of water, they've got planks, and they've got to get everybody across, including the water, to fill up that tank to see who's got the most water. All of that in three minutes. It'll all become clear when you watch the game. It's called Crossing the Chasm. Are you ready, teams? Ready? <laughs> already have one man across the chasm, so too for the Reds of Ipswich, and 
and they've got their long flank in operation and already the water is beginning to be ferried and the wheelbarrow now now the problem is with uh, Rayleigh that they've got their long flank and what they've got to do is transfer that long flank somehow whereas uh, the Reds of Ipswich have got three people across the chasm now the Blues are thinking now they've got it uh, that's better and they too have got three but already one bucket of water is going across for Ipswich and they're filling up their uh, bucket fast the yellows are having a tough time because they've dropped their plank in the chasm and it's only 5,000 feet deep and they'll lose uh, 10 points oh five points if they just touch the ground between two minutes left and the blues have got one bucket of water no two buckets of water in and so too of the reds but the reds are nearly there the reds whereas yellow at the back hextable are having real trouble with their long flank they've got it there now they've got it there now there's a touch the blues have touched their plank and i don't think the reds have touched anything and i think the reds are just about there and well in time the time Ipswich have done well and so too are the Blues the Blues are across and we're still waiting for Hexable and they've got their plank and they're there well bags of initiative there and I had the Reds winning by a country mile but I'd forgotten of course they had to finish standing on their blocks and Martin's the referee so you put me right on the one two three on crossing the chasm well after a lot of d d deliberation I think it's the only word to describe it the team from Rayleigh were actually second but because they actually got the whole team on the blocks at the end they actually finished first and so the team from Ipswich which actually crossed the chasm first they had to be unfortunately play second so what points did they end up with well in fact because there are a few bits of equipment and bodies touching the floor <laughs> the yellow team had five points deducted yeah. the blue team from Rayleigh who actually had 15 points deducted and the red team from Ipswich they lost 10 points Martin many thanks indeed and that makes for an interesting scoreboard now take a look at this at the halfway stage Ipswich have 200 points Hextable have 240 points, but in the lead with 345 points, it is Rayleigh! Yeah! What was your favourite sport when you were at school? My favourite sport at school was athletics. Uh, like I said, I've always been fast and strong and ugly, so I always just chose athletics. What made you interested in throwing the hammer in the first place? Uh, well, initially I was a triple jumper and there was a, a picture of, on the wall in a weight training gym of a hammer thrower and I decided I liked to throw hammers and I was 10. What was the first championship you went in for? The first championship I went in for is one which is being held in a few weeks time which was the district schools I think most of you might have done. You, you do your schools championship and then it's your, your local district so it was my district schools championships. Which is more important strength or technique? Oh, no doubt about it, it's definitely technique. Um, you can get very, very strong, yet have problems with your technique. So the idea is to be technically efficient and then you can get strong. So obviously technique. How much training do you have to do? On average nowadays, I'm training about four hours a day. But in the middle of winter, it's sometimes up to six or seven hours a day. Do you have to eat a special kind of diet? No, I'm on a, an old diet called a seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. So, no, no particular diet, but generally speaking, a lot of whatever I like. Do you do any different sports during your spare time? During my spare time, I might have the odd game of squash or badminton, but generally speaking, no. Do you follow in any of your family's footsteps a hammer throwing? No, uh, none of my family have ever thrown hammers before, but I come from a very sporting background. I've had a couple of international athletes, uh, there's an old relative many years ago who was a world champion in the boxing, so quite a sporting family, but no hammer throwers. Have you got any lifelong ambition? Yes, uh, I think everyone's ambition is to sort of go to an Olympics, and I went to one, and I was a bit disappointed, so my lifetime ambition would be to win an Olympic gold medal at some time in the future, preferably in Korea in three years' time. So that's my ambition. Well, Clements Hall Leisure Centre, as I said earlier, has every conceivable facility, including this magnificent swimming pool. And we're ready for the first of our two pool games. Martin Gervin's got them all ready at the start line, and our first game is called Ducking and Diving. Are you ready? Away they go. 
150 points for the winning team this time, followed by 120 and 90. Ipswich leading through Gillian Burnell, but it's very close. Daniela Wellard of Hextable is up close. There's the duck and dive. And they've got to swap that brick that they're carrying with them for one of the balls and put the ball in the uh, net. They're clambering on board. Gillian has done well. Oh, she's reaching it. Oh, and she's gone in. Is it? It's in. Right, puts the brick back, and away she goes, but so too does Emma Nichols for Rayleigh. Emma Nichols, and it's the quickest way back. And Gillian Burnell being chased now by Daniela and Gillian. And it's good, fast swim, this. On they go. Vashti Green through her red tyre. Swimming well. Charlotte Saunders for Hexable, Fleur Harrington for Rayleigh. Vashti the first out. It's in. Nice swim. And she comes straight back by diving underneath. And Fleur Harrington chases her. So does Vashti. Well, the Reds from Ipswich looking good at the moment. Diane Pooley. In she goes. Of course, they're not all noted swimmers. There'll be some slow swimmers as well. But Diane being chased by Nicola Jones and Louise Aldridge. Nicola for Rayleigh, Louise for Hextable. Some swimming on their back as soon as they've got their brick, which is uh, picked up from a basket under the water. Diane Pooley's climbed out, swaps her brick for the ball. In it goes. Nice one. Ipswich looking good. Nicola Jones for Rayleigh, looking good. Ah, Louise has dropped her brick. And she's got to go down for it again. That's a pity. She's got to go down again for a brick. And she's dropped it slightly deep. And David Fry, meanwhile, is heading away. David Fry. He's being chased, is David, by Jason Bennett of Rayleigh. But his ball is in the net. And Matthew Smith on his way back for Hextable. The Reds looking good. Michael Strong flashing his way down, being chased by Ian Smith of Rayleigh. Michael Strong in the red of Ipswich. Shelley Cope coming up now for Hextable. Nice one, Michael. Swaps his ball, gets it out, slips it in. The Reds are still there. Now the Blues, Ian Smith being chased by Shelley Cope. Not much in it, the Yellows have caught up. And the Reds up to their final swimmer, Paul Cullum. In he goes. He's got his brick. And it's not very far behind him that Barry Cruz in the blue of Rayleigh. And the crowd is going wild. All on the last leg. Oh dear. Paul Cullum's dropped his brick. He's got to go down for it again. The Reds have gone from first to third. And Barry Cruz for Rayleigh being chased by David Chisholm. Barry Cruz of Rayleigh. And Rayleigh, the overall leaders, look as though they've not won another point. This is very bad luck on Paul Cullum. He's only a little lad, and that's pretty deep water for him. And out come Rayleigh. The flag is aloft. And they're going to yank Paul Cullum out for it, which, look at him, like a cork out of a bottle. It just helped him out. But it looked like blues, red, and yellow. Well, that was a very exciting race, the first race in the swimming pool, the first one we had this afternoon. If we take a look at the scoreboard, we've got a very exciting situation. We have at the bottom the Ipswich team who have 320 points. They are only just 10 points behind the team from Hextable with 330 points. And out in the lead, we have Rayleigh Swain School with 495 points. Yeah! 
cobblestone are certainly not downhearted. There's one big swimming race to come before we decide who goes through the final stages at Loughborough. It's called Obstacle Relay. Are you ready? And they are Daniela, Gillian and Emma underway. Gillian Burnell for Ipswich, just a touch ahead. Next team in. Some have thrown their uh, rubber ring. That's Vashti Green. Swimming well for the Reds. She's got Charlotte Saunders on her left. Fleur Harrington on her right. The shrimp net goes in next. Diane Pooley slightly leading from Louise Aldridge and Nicola Jones. It's Rick from Hextable from Rayleigh. But uh, Rayleigh have uh, pulled it up into second. And the fourth of the Ipswich swimmers is in. That's David Fry. But he's been overtaken by Jason Bennett. Now, Rayleigh on the move. Oh, and he's come back again, David Fry. He's come back again splendidly. That's a marvellous swim, and they're absolutely locked together. Michael Strong of Ipswich, Ian Smith of Rayleigh. And not far behind is Shelley Coke. So the last swimmer, and being followed by teammates, Barry Cruz. He's got to score a goal in the net, and they've all got to be out on the side with flag aloft. Though he's missed his first one. The Reds are in. Now, come on. Who's going to be the first team out of the pool? With the ball in. I think it's the Reds. Yes, Copleston have won an event. The Blues are second. Rayleigh are second. Hexler are third. And that's what Copleston were hoping for. Just to finish up winning one event. And I'm sure Martin Gerben's going to confirm that. The Reds have got an event at last. The Ipswich team have been so near. Go back home. And you can hold your head high, can't you? Oh, that's good. You did well. Did you enjoy that one? Yeah. Well, what a good day to get us underway in our 13th series and the Reds winning one event right at the end there. Our final scoreboard looks like this now. Hextable, 420 points. Ipswich, 470 points. But the team who led from the start and maintained that lead and finished with 615 points are Rayleigh! Yeah. Now those 615 points will get transferred to our master scoreboard to see whether they make the semi-finals or the finals of We Are The Champions, which will be held in Shepshed near Loughborough. Now we want to thank everyone at Clements Hall for making this a marvellous day. The facilities were absolutely superb, but as ever, we save our biggest cheer of the day for our guest, what a good guest he was, Martin Gervin! Yeah! Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Very good day. Good competition. Well, I always say to the competitors, Martin, that you've made yourself another three or four hundred fans. They'll be watching you, what you do, and wishing you the best of luck in the athletic Thanks very season. Much. Thanks. Great Smashing day. day. Okay. Now, where are we next week? We're in Magherafelt in County Londonderry. Our guest celebrity then will be Martin O'Neill, that lovely soccer player for Northern Ireland and Notts County. Meanwhile, there are just three words left for our competitors who are waiting on the bank. That is, away you go!